um, I'm in charge of uh, what we call our global MBA, which is another MBA than the one that you have here. And I've been uh, involved in a different panel for validating, validating courses, I think around 11 now internally. So, um,
that um, we would like to discuss a little bit some elements about um, course learning, well, unit learning outcome and assessments and all those kind of things. Okay? Um, I was thinking that instead of having you know a nice PowerPoint presentation and all these kind of things, I would do it more in an interactive way and have more discussion with you uh, because I've seen that you had a little bit of reading to do um, and design a few um, slides. I, I think the, the first thing um, that we have to remember is what is the purpose? Why, why are we doing that? Okay? And it's actually to answer two main questions that may be really, really simple but that actually are not that simple. So the first one is describing what okay? and the what part is actually what is going to be your learning outcome what do we want the student to learn what do we want them to know once they have passed one unit so that is the first thing the second one is how we make sure that they know what they need to know and that's more the part about the assessment assignment okay? so, um, what is happening is when when we are working with the University of Bedford China, we have when it comes to quality a lot of different templates and a lot of different elements that you have to actually fill in. Um, I think we have to see that as um, something that is eager to actually help. So if you look at what we call the UF, which is the Unit Information Form, it's already structured. So you don't really have the choice. You have to provide some really, really specific information that have to be in there. And of course, those information are in line with what you ask to do here. So there is a part that is going to be about the content, and there is a part that is going to be about the evaluation. Okay. So, um, do you need me to have the mic or? Yeah. Is it working? Yeah. Um, so, um, the, how many of you have, have already worked with um, the University of Bedfordshire or their like courses that we deliver? Okay. So you are familiar with what we call the UF? Yes. Yeah. Okay. So. Um, if, if we are talking about the UA, they have you have some, as I said earlier, I, I would say three main, uh, four main elements. The first one are more, I would say, administrative one. That's where we are going to find the name of the unit, um, the number of the unit, the prerequisites. Do we need to, uh, do the student actually need prerequisites or not? Okay, so that, that's more kind of administrative information. Then you have all what is related to that what question, which is about the content, but which is also about what are the learning outcome. And most of the time, the learning outcome that we have are divided in two different parts. Um, I am working with um, mainly the faculty of well, what we call the business school. So what I say may be just like, you know, um, specific to the business school. So if you design something in engineering, maybe you need to check because you may have different things. But what we are doing at the business school now is only having two different learning outcomes. Okay? Two different learning outcomes. One that has to do with knowledge and one that has to do with skills. Okay? Now, it's getting a little bit tricky because if you have um, a unit that is actually shared among different courses, the learning outcome about knowledge must be different per course. The one about skills may be the same, but the learning must be different. So for example, I'm sharing a course, in, a unit in strategy, with MSc in Finance and MSc in Human Resources. The learning outcome about knowledge for the finance student will be different from the one for the Human Resource student. 
the skills may be exactly the same because the skills are linked directly to the units and to strategy to what you are teaching. Okay? And then you move to the third part that is more about your assessment per se. And in the assessment, what we want to know is what type of as well, what strategy do you have, what type of assessment you are going to actually use, and what we call the thresholds criteria. And the thresholds criteria, you have to be really be careful because it's what is the what is the lowest thing that the student can do to pass. So you have to be really, really careful about how you frame it. For example, because if you say that you want a student to critically analyze and your student is actually trying to critically analyze but he's not critically analyzing, he's going to fail. Whereas if you say attempt to critically analyze, then he can actually pass. So the main issue we have, I would say, with all this work is kind of playing with words and making sure that, that we are at the right level. Does it make sense? Then what we have is more, you know, uh, your learning, what, 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 what are the references you are going to use and all those kind of things. But you already have a really, really clear structure about what is needed. The main issue, of course, it may have the structure, how do you provide input in that structure. Okay? So, um, the other thing you will have to, um, and, and that's a little bit aside from what I was asked to do, but keep in mind that you will also have to link your unit learning outcome to the course learning outcome. So when you design a course, you have what we call a SIF, a course information form, which is kind of the same thing as a UIF, but the UIF is for the unit. You have one for the course, and then you have, think of it as a funnel, okay? You have one overreaching document, that is a SIF, and then within the SIF you have the different UIFs that are going to actually enrich it. So you have some course learning outcome, and you will need to map those course learning outcome to the unit learning outcome to make sure that they are in line. Okay? So, um, let's start by um, first asking, do you have any questions, any things that, that were kind of really, really difficult that you were struggling with when, when you were actually given the, um, the guidance? Have you started working on, on your UFs or not? Yeah, yeah. Yeah? yeah? Okay. Um, easy, difficult? Students, and that should be reflected. We are not asking the same thing 
um, to a student that is at level 4 than a student that is at level 6. Okay, so that there is kind of um, more, we are asking more. But what more are we asking? Um, you will see that, um, and I think it's, it's just, um, you have an example of learning objective verbs. Um, and those are um, actually um, those that you can use later when you design your assignment. Okay? For example, if you are saying that a student has to demonstrate something, how do you make sure that the student is demonstrating that? So the, the words you are going to use to actually design your learning outcome should give you some clues about what is needed when it comes to your unit um, strategy and, and assessment. Okay. Um,
the skills is actually the ability to use those frameworks. Okay? So for um, most of my examples are going to come from management, and I'm pretty sure you can actually translate them. Um, if you are doing strategy and you are actually saying what you want to know is looking at um, the um, what you want to know is to let's say um, resource-based theory. Okay, resource-based theory is saying that in a firm the only way a firm can compete is by being different. That's my theory. Okay. So I've got that as a theory, and I've got some framework that we can actually take, just like the green analysis, value, rarity, mutability, that is going to actually help me assess that. So my theory is a resource-based view. My skill is the way I'm going to apply green or apply this framework. So I'm pretty sure if you're looking at nutrition, there is kind of um, elements that, that are part of the theory, and then you have some framework to make sure that this is met. And that's what we are doing. So we are trying to really separate what do we need to know in terms of concepts, in terms of theories, and what do we do in terms of skills when, when it comes to making sure that you, you apply them. Um, I'm just going to... Um, So I'm just going to give you um, another example, um, the way we frame them, okay? And we discuss the difference between this one, the one we just said, and um, the one we, we have. Um, demonstrate a systematic understanding and critical appreciation of the interrelationship of diverse theories in the MBA toolkit to challenge existing preconceptions and develop positive and inquiring approach to management and enterprise. Okay? See, this one is really, really straightforward about the theories. Okay? And how can we question those theories to create new knowledge? And that's what the students will have to do. Okay? The second one, is about demonstrate intelligent practice by imaginative and critical integration of the theory and practice to create a tangible, deliverable, throughout critical, insightful evaluation. And blah, blah, blah. So the skills are mainly the, the easiest way of doing it is knowledge is part of the work the world of ideas. Okay, that's where you are looking at your theories, that's where you are looking at what you need to know. And then you have your skills that are how do I apply that specifically. And I think I was wrong at the beginning. The knowledge is always the same, the skills are different. I will have to check that, but I, I think that's the way we are doing it. So the knowledge is always the same. Clarify this point. Um, so you have to be really, really strict. I would say when when you are designing those. So is it knowledge or is it skills? Okay. Skills most of the time are things you are using to develop something that is tangible that you can deliver. Okay. The Knowledge is more, as I said earlier, about the ideas. Okay? So, 
Second one, demonstrate your ability to further research, plan and analyze findings, summarize and predict outcomes and present your project in a professional manner. That's 100% skills. Yeah. The first one is, I, I would rework the first one because it's, we were not sure if it was you know, um, knowledge or, or uh, skills. So, assessments, most of the time we are having two assessment points. And um, what we tend to do is to make sure that those assessment points are evaluating both learning outcome. Okay? Um, so, assessment number one.
because there is, um, and the second one, following skills and ability, successful communicate advanced level of critical evaluation in a variety of pro uh, formats suitable for postgraduate level in topics specific to the stu uh, student's degree program. Okay, so what, what I would say is when you are, once again, when you are looking at knowledge, think in terms of theories, think in terms of concepts. And frame your learning outcome around that. Okay? When you are doing your skills, frame your learning outcome around frameworks, around tools, around things that the students will be able to actually use and that you can actually see if they are applying them or not. Okay? Which is actually going to make your life a little bit easier after when you are designing your assignment. Because within the assignment, you will want the student to refer to specific framework and know those framework. And you will want the student to refer to specific concepts and specific theories. So that's where we are starting to actually make the link. So you have your, let's say, learn. Let's say you have your learning outcome one, learning outcome two. This one is knowledge, okay? this one is skills. So, within there, you will have your theories and you will have some concepts. Within there, you will have some framework and you will have some tools. Okay? So, once you have that, then you can ask yourself how? 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 And how? And that's the second part. Okay? This part is the what. What do they need? And once I have identified those different parts, how do I make sure my assessments are actually <coughs> assessing that? Does it make sense? So, let's see. you are 
the, the document is actually stating that the assessment one um, target learning outcome one and two, whereas it's just targeting the skill one. Okay? So you need within your assessment to have kind of um, a mix of, um, of different elements. Be. Okay? And you may 
have some different schools. Okay? So, um, do you have just like name of people that are doing that? Who develop theory about nutrition? Marking scheme 
which is later going to decide is it a student that is going to have an A or is it a student that is going to fail. But that's another step. Okay? Threshold expectation. Identify and critically evaluate your current skills and abilities in a course specific employment position. Okay? Let's say that I've got my CV and I have identified what I know and I have evaluated my skill and that's it. Am I going to pass or not? No? Why? No, the main issue here is the word critically. Okay? So identify and evaluate, let's see, identify and critically evaluate your current skills and abilities in a course specific employment position. Okay? I'm coming with my CV and I'm actually saying, okay, um, I've got, um, I'm, I'm good at what I'm doing because I've got, you know, those diploma. I'm good at strategy because I'm, I have a PhD, I've done a master by research, and I've done my undergrad in the management, so I'm good at strategy, I have evaluated it, that's it. Okay. Am I going to pass? Why? I've done my evaluation, okay, and I've identified what I'm good at or not good at, but I haven't provided any critical analysis. And because within the threshold ex expectation you have critically evaluated, then technically I should fail. Now, if I'm providing my CV, and saying, okay, I've got my PhD from this university in France, or let's say, France is a special case, but let's say that um, I'm saying, okay, I've got my PhD in UK, uh, my PhD in research is coming from uh, a university that is in the Russell Group, that is just like, you know, one of the best universities, and uh, this university is granted blah 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 by um, the um, um, financial time and when I'm comparing this university to the one in the world and blah 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 now I'm starting to actually position myself in a more critical approach and I can't actually say okay I've done that but it's been you know 20 years ago so am I still current am I still relevant when I'm actually teaching Yes, because I attended those conferences. Yes, because I've done this personal development and all those different elements. And I'm starting to actually question not only what I've got, but how I have constructed it. And I'm adding some critical elements, kind of, you know, um, reflection about what is going on. So that's why it's really, really important for you to frame that th those um, different um, threshold in a way where you are not demanding too much of the student and where you can actually have you know a, a layout when it comes to your own assessment of what they are going to do. Because if you go directly for the critically then they will have to be critical. Um, effectively summarize and communicate at next level no, that's fine. Assessment 2, employ uh, an appropriate reflective model for the placement and critically evaluate how you have adopted and changed throughout the placement. Work autonomously to successfully complete a scientifically and post relevant placement that is a minimum of 48 hours. Effectively communicate your reflective process and finding in a clear and concise manner in written. Demonstrate postgraduate level of critical evaluation and scientific knowledge. Okay? Um, let's take the last one. Demonstrate postgraduate levels of critical evaluation and scientific knowledge. If I'm giving that, 
that to um, our end of quality. The first thing she's going to say is, and so what? Because what do we mean by demonstrate postgraduate levels? What does it mean? I may not agree with you about what is a postgraduate level. Maybe I'm harsher than some of my colleagues. So that's why you need to be really, really clear about what do you think the student need. So there is no discussion and that we all can agree about it. That's why it's always interesting when you are doing this, don't do it alone. Always share it with you know, your colleague and, and discuss with them. Do you agree with that? Is it really the minimum that we want a student to know at the end of this unit? Because that's really what is going to be needed. Try also um, not to have too many elements when you are talking about your special standards. Don't start to pile up a lot of different elements because you're not looking at the marking criteria. That's something that's different. Okay, the marking criteria is how you are going to actually provide a grade at the end of the road. Here, it's really what do the student need to know, what do they need able to do. Is that okay? Is it helping? Yes? Um, just wanted to...